<laughs> hereby call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy first day of school, everybody. I'm not sure if it's an official holiday, but <laughs> everyone seems to be happy about it today. Uh, we generally open each school committee meeting with hearing of visitors. That's an opportunity for any resident to come before the superintendent, the mayor, and the school committee uh, to speak to us about any issue they're concerned with. Uh, tonight, no one signed up for hearing of visitors, so we will go right on to our consent agenda. The consent agenda is a bundle of routine school committee business uh, that allows us to uh, handle it as one package to expedite the meeting and keep the meeting going along. Generally pretty routine pieces of business. However, uh, <coughs> any individual member of the school committee may request that an item be removed from the consent agenda for individual discussion and consideration. So having said all that, do any of the members of the committee wish to remove any items from the consent agenda this evening? Okay. Item C. Item C. Uh, okay. Any others? All right. Then I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda minus <coughs> item C. Motion <coughs> approved. Second. Motion made properly seconded. All in favor? Approved unanimously. Uh, Mr. Minicello, item C. I'd just like to highlight item C. When someone makes a donation to the Brockton Public Schools, I think we should acknowledge them. Um, in our agenda packet, we see here that uh, Christine Duncan, a parent of a child who attends the George School and works for the Western Austin Waterfront Hotel, um, was able to have her company donate two new HP Office Jet Pro 8610 printers to the George School. So um, we certainly appreciate her generosity and the generosity of the Western Hotel. So, great. And we found out that what they do is they have trade shows and they use the printers at trade shows and then don't have use for them but don't want to pack them up to take them wherever they're going and they allow their employees to <coughs> make donations. So wow. the parents of the George School was thrilled today and yeah. to have a couple of extra printers and brand new. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's great. Very pleased. Well, that's outstanding. We certainly appreciate uh, that donation. So having said that, motion has been made. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Approved. Can I mention another donation while we're talking donations? So we also have, and you know every year, the kids come to school, they're all excited, you know, the new sneakers, you know, the backpacks filled with more supplies than, than you know what to do with. And yet not every child has that. So we're very, very pleased to acknowledge a donation from Council on Aging who got together and got all kinds of school supplies, uh, brought them down to John Snell Grove for our school adjustment counselors to deliver. Uh, Tobias Collins helped out. And Mr. Mayor, I know there was a situation where we usually had a donor that would also donate the backpacks, which didn't come through this year. So I know the mayor, through his charity fund, was able to donate yeah. quite a few backpacks for our children. Yeah, we're so the, uh, <coughs> we maintain a 501c3 called the Mayor's Children's Fund. So. We had a golf tournament last Friday. Thank you to everyone that supported the golf tournament. We raised a lot of dough. Um, so we got a phone call yesterday that we had school supplies but no backpacks. So uh, we had the Mayor's Children's Fund pick up the cost of 80 backpacks so that we could uh, get everything out to the kids today. So we're very happy to do it. That's what the Children's Fund is for. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. You still want me to run the meeting? Okay. I, I All right. <laughs> uh, so. Go ahead, Ozzy. Yeah, what uh, well, Mr. Minicello said, I think I mentioned this before, there are government agencies who will, with a letter from us, will give us their old equipment, which is a year old, two years old, what have you. Uh, all the agencies do it. They're willing to do it. We have to go pick them up, and all they need is a letter stating that's what uh, we need, and that would take care of it. So. And something is an additional piece that would save us a couple of dollars. So. Mr. Petroni was very good at finding donations <laughs> or finding trucks. We'll have to get a new truck to pick them up. But um, truly, we can look into it if you have, you know, 
information. Yeah. Just point Aldo in the right direction. Okay. So moving right along, we will uh, go to the superintendent's report on learning and teaching on the first day of school. <coughs> Before I start, you know, I want to say that uh, we have a school committee member that's been in crisis this week. And I really want to share with all of you that Mr. Minicello has just celebrated his 50th birthday. So before, I, I can't go into the opening of school. So I, I want you all to join me. We want to make sure everybody, all his constituents can see. This is a crying towel. So we want to make sure you have this for the meeting. And please join us, in, uh, and afterwards we'll have this all cut up uh, to celebrate his 50th birthday. So, Mr. Minicello, we're so glad you joined the group. <laughs> we can't, I know. I was told I can't light the candles. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I, let's go show him his cake, and then we'll cut it up so he can see it. <laughs> we know. <laughs> So we're so glad that you joined the crowd. Thank you very much. Okay. Any, any <laughs> no words of wisdom, Tom, to share with us? I, I spoke to a friend of mine this week who's 51, and she was sympathetic to how I felt. And she says, I know how you feel. We're on the wrong side of young. I'm like... <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> but being here with you and celebrating my birthday, I couldn't ask for anything more. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't also tell you that Mrs. Joyce had a birthday just the day before you, as I will not tell you which birthday it was. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you what are you driving the day before? Yeah. Next week. She's oh, next week. I'm sorry. I thought it was. I'm sorry. I thought it was the day before. September sixth. On Patty, just September sixth. So that's Eight. coming up. <laughs> Why we get along so well? Yeah. <laughs> I was actually very surprised because I thought Tom was much older. I was. <laughs> Excuse me, but I have my hair and I don't have a bare belly, so I'm not doing too bad. So I'm not doing too bad at 50. Get so. back to me in 10 years. <laughs> I better get back to the opening of school. <laughs> yeah. So what happened for the first day of school? Okay. First of all, uh, yesterday I want to say it was day one of 181 for our teachers. So our teachers returned, um, I do want you to hear these numbers, our teachers returned to the tune of uh, 1,331 teachers, we had 22 new teachers, and we still have 19 positions that we are filling. So that clearly shows the loss of our professional teaching staff. Um, again, I, I can't say enough about them, not only yesterday, I, I shared a message, you try to share a message of hope. Um, I know how professional they will be during what I would call really some difficult times that we're facing. And sure enough, and I'll talk a little bit about being in those classes today, that's exactly what they were doing today. They were back at work, welcoming children, and didn't, didn't skip a beat. So again, thank you to <coughs> our teachers for always coming through. Um, so as far as today goes, uh, I want to first of all also thank Principal Sharon Wolder and her administrative team because on Monday she welcomed over 1,200 new freshmen and their parents for freshman orientation. The cafeterias were packed, as I said, not only with the students that clearly looked apprehensive, but many of them came with parents. Uh, they were given tours. They got to meet their housemasters, assistant housemasters. You could feel relationships forming, a comfort level, and the best thing they had this year were students that were called, and it clearly said mentors on their shirts. So the orange shirts were all over the school, and they made a connection. I think they wore those same shirts today for opening. So they would have been there to assist the kids and, and hopefully no more sending them in the wrong direction when they're looking to get around the school. So thank you. I know that was uh, certainly an increase in the number of kids participating along with their family members and including our students from the high school. Today I started out by visiting, and, I, and it's interesting to talk about two schools. I visited the George School, and I'll have to tell you, Mr. Henningsen, <coughs> I went there early. I wanted to see what would happen on the first day with traffic. Although it is crazy there, meaning lots of cars, because everybody wants to drop their child off on the first day. 
and it was well managed today. I could not get anywhere near that school at all. So I left there, came back later, and went to East Middle School first. And East Middle School is very special to me. You've heard me talk about it a number of times. I went into the building, and I will tell you, I mean, it was clean. The custodians clearly did a lot of work. But what a difference when you go into a school with no air conditioning, you know, truly needing upgrades around the school, whether it be technology, et cetera. And those are things I know we're talking about. Um, class sizes were, were clearly larger than I would have liked. I was actually counting heads in every classroom, but the kids were not skipping a beat. They were, there was instruction going on, there were rules being set, the halls were quiet, and yet when the bell rang, lively voices, kids happy to be back, absolutely stifling hot. And you wonder how, and I, and I know this won't last a long time, but we'll have this again with the heat come at, you know, towards the end of May into June. And it really does, it, it makes it very, very difficult to get through, I think, the day. Different when I finally got to the George and could get into your parking lot. Um, air condition, technology, you know, beautiful school, uh, new administration clearly setting a tone with the parents. It was a welcoming atmosphere. So again, one of our largest elementary schools. And I have to say, our kids are beautiful. You know, when you really look at the children and they're, they're, you know, the first day they were all spiffy and looked great, excited to be there. I have to quote Alexander, who was having lunch with all of the little first grade students sitting there. He looked at me, he doesn't know me, and he said to me, he asked me how I knew his name. Well, of course, they're all wearing their names. <laughs> so I then started to talk to him. He told me today was the best day of his life. He was so excited. And I truly told him that it is going to be a day that he will remember. You always remember. And he wasn't a kindergartner anymore. He was a first grader. So that was very clear. Wonderful things happening at the George School. Um, our numbers, just to give you an idea of where we were at, we had attendance overall of 93.37% district-wide. Our enrollment right now, and this is including the kindergarten, which is quickly approaching, I think it was 1,299 as of 4 o'clock today. So it is approaching 1,300 kindergarten students with many that they still have not even put into the system. 16,748, including those 1,300 kindergartners, who will report, by the way, on Monday, September 14th. Uh, the elementary numbers were 8,233. Middle school, uh, 3,899. And our high school, including all our, our alternative settings, et cetera, 4,701. I didn't have the final number on Brockton High School. I don't know if Principal Wolder has it. I think she'll come up and do her report. 42.22 is Brockton High. Um, I will wait until uh, late September, early October, when we get very close to that October 1st date. I would like to look district-wide with you and take a look at the class sizes in our elementary, our middle, and our high school. We will be carefully watching those kindergarten numbers if, if we have to make any changes with teaching staff, add teachers. I mean, that's going to be a conversation that we're going to have to have as we go forward and watch those numbers settle. And you'll get updates tonight from all the different levels. Mr. Thomas will talk to you about uh, transportation, so you'll kind of hear some of the things that we're watching uh, very carefully. So I think with that, uh, I will invite Deputy Superintendent Barry to come up first. And I know you're going to start with elementary. Executive Director, Mrs. June Saber McGuire. I also have to tell you before you come up to speak that I don't know if you saw it this morning, but we had, had received a phone call from Fox News. They wanted to highlight. They said we had one of the largest viewerships. And they came to Brockton High this morning. They were out there. I think Deputy Superintendent Thomas told me it's 6 a.m. And they were, you know, watching the kids come in and out of Brockton High School. Um, I know they also took a trip to the Huntington School where they were giving out special surprise packages to teachers, you know, throughout uh, uh, the state. So uh, we had one of our teachers at the Huntington School who actually got a surprise this morning, and I'm sure you'll tell us about it. So, sorry. So we're passing the torch here, and um, Executive Director June Sable McGuire is actually going to do the elementary um, first day of school opening. Oh, great. So I have to um, admit that this morning driving to work, I was more than a little bit melancholy when I didn't take a right on Market Street and instead took a left. But I have to say that um, 
despite that, it was a positive first day for me full time in my role as executive director and I was off to the Raymond School. And I have to say by the time I got to the Raymond, the students were well into their school day, they were in their seats, they were having their breakfast, and I'm sure that you've heard that the Raymond School is piloting a voluntary uniform program. And I spoke to a few of the parents out there, certainly the teachers and the students were really excited and they were wearing their Raymond School shirts with pride. So that was really exciting to be able to see and again the pre-K to 5, we're, we're watching the K to 5 model over at the Raymond and they're off to a great start. I did get to go back to the Raymond a second time because they were hosting a professional development for the, for the um, kindergarten teachers at the Raymond, the Barrett Russell, the Huntington, the George, and am I forgetting one? Barrett Russell, Raymond, George, Huntington, and the unknown. And what they're doing is they're piloting a reading curriculum called Reach for Reading. And we're excited about watching how that program develops and how those teachers are able to implement it with fidelity and how the students respond to it. So we're going to be watching that as a district very closely to see if that's something we're going to look at, be looking at expanding through the district. I also got to go over to the Downey School. I have to say Principal John Lynch did an excellent job opening that school, visited classrooms there. Very successful opening over at the, the Downey. I did get reports from other executive directors and representatives from the Office of Teaching and Learning and nothing but positives from our principals and all of the people that visited those schools in order to support the first day opening. As I, I have to mention the Huntington as well because I know Principal Lynch is in the audience tonight and I heard that she had a very busy day started by of course a visit from the mayor so the mayor was over at the Huntington this morning. I know that she had a visit from Dr. Keen South from the executive team and she also had a visit from Dr. Roman from our Office of Teaching and Learning. So I would say that she was pretty busy, but to top it all off, as the superintendent mentioned, then Fox 25 was on the doorstep. Of course, this was a good news story as one of our teachers, a third grade teacher, Mindy Redman, had, um, she had submitted an entry for Mrs. Lynch, what was it for? Donors choose. Donors choose. That's right. And she actually won a $500, $500 toward a set of classroom books for her students. And so they surprised her. They surprised her students. And I'm sure it was um, a really exciting and fun event at the school. Right, Mrs. Lynch? <laughs> So she had a wonderful first yeah, day. It is, so that's great. So as, and as Superintendent Smith said, right now our kindergarten teachers are preparing to welcome our newest students, our kindergarten and pre-K teachers. And what they'll be doing over the next few weeks is they'll be sitting down with their kin with the kindergarten students, with their families, and they'll be doing assessments and really just getting to know the families so that they can be well prepared for our new students. Great, thank you. I actually um, uh, tried to give Dr. Murray a pass because um, he was exactly where he needed to be today at West Middle School as the principal, um, but he tells me that in his role as executive director, he is prepared to do a middle school update as well. <laughs> we'll do it together. Yeah. Good evening. Um, I uh, beg to differ with the superintendent about the middle school numbers. I had several students show up and announce today, so it's 3,900. Oh. <laughs> I'm only teasing. And then one of my colleagues informed me that a student came into our office this afternoon and was incredibly excited at having met the president of the Brockton Public Schools. There you go. So congratulations, you've been elevated even further in your titles. Uh, I think overall middle schools, uh, we had a great day. All my colleagues reported that uh, they were able to get to class quickly and start their learning and teaching or rapidly. We're very fortunate with the middle school setup that two-thirds of our buildings are familiar with the routines so that uh, we spend a little additional time with the sixth graders that transition but for the most part we're able to get right right down to brass, brass tacks as far as uh, teaching and learning goes. Um, 
really we didn't have any reports, at least uh, to me, uh, again from my colleagues, with any issues with van transportation or buses. We we all have quite a few um, vans that that service our students, and although some delays, as typical of the first day, as people are learning their routes, it seemed to be a very smooth start and uh, conclusion to our day. So that was a, a positive. And uh, I guess East is a little different than West because our air conditioning was working beautifully. Oh wait, we, we don't have any, that's right. So <laughs> it was a little uncomfortable, but I think in general everybody was really excited about being back. Um, all of us are very proud of our teachers and the efforts that they make in, on behalf of the students. So it was, um, I think, a great day. I did get a call though from a a colleague of mine who actually used to work with me and all she kept saying was my students have uniforms my students have uniforms and she was cackling on the phone at me now I was kind of busy this morning and I couldn't believe it Mrs. Lynch <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was good to hear from her she had a great start I think to the day but uh, all of my colleagues were very pleased and uh, very happy to get get the year started. Our class sizes are large, uh, but our parents and students understand that. They're also very excited about the prospect of middle school sports returning, along with intramurals and all the other activities that uh, we've worked so hard to restore. So I think all in all, it was a great, uh, great first day. Dr. Mario Lance, I've been looking at the Raymond, which is in a pilot year. Um, maybe you can be one of the first middle schools to truly <laughs> implement uniforms. To be honest with you, I think there is some interest there. Uh, if there was probably one area of concern for parents, especially those new to the buildings at the middle level, is the dress code. And it seems like kind of a silly thing. But at that age, with all the social and uh, psychological changes and pressures, the uniforms probably would alleviate a lot of that angst, and it would also make the whole dress code thing kind of a moot point. So uh, I think that would be something that would be a worthwhile entertaining uh, going forward. Very good. I would just say too, just to reiterate a couple of points, um, as Dr. Mari said, two-thirds of the population at middle school, they're used to middle school. Um, I visited schools today and I was paying particular attention to that one-third because I am now the parent of a, um, a middle schooler. Um, so I was really paying attention to what schools were doing to alleviate uh, the concerns and the anxiety of sixth graders. And I was at the Ashfield today and everyone got to their homerooms. One 7th and 8th grade were in their classrooms. 6th grade then had the hallways to themselves to actually tour the school and really get to know it in a way um, that made them less nervous. Uh, the other school that's worth mentioning is um, East Middle School because we're talking about students who are coming from the Raymond K-8 model and are now part of a new school community and um, I would just say that um, when students arrived there, if they were from the Raymond, they were really welcomed into that school as part of that school community. Um, and, and I would also say I cannot believe 15 minutes maybe and kids are in classrooms and getting right down to business uh, so it's it's impressive. Mr. Minichelli. One point that Mr. Um, that Dr. Murray mentioned about the middle school sports program <clears throat> last week I was speaking with um, a middle school guidance counselor who um, was happy to learn that um, the school committee and the, with the support of the mayor um, reinstated the program and he said to me that he could definitely sense last year a drop in morale with some of the kids that um, the school spirit really centers around the competition between the different schools that you know the kids really bandied together and enjoy the program and that for many of these kids he said it allows us to use it as a carrot to get these kids motivated in some cases um, and it is a motivator for a, a bunch of kids to really look forward to that to come to school and pique their interest as you've seen here at the high school there's the sports programs here at the high school in some instances can save kids you know they can save certain kids who need that as an incentive to come to school every day and that's really you know they have to get good grades and keep their grades up in order to continue with the program but um, so I think it's I think it's a worthwhile investment that we made and um, I think it will 
bring back that school spirit and, and I think a lot of students and believe it or not a lot of parents I mean you know, the mayor and I have spoken on this many times uh, you wouldn't believe and I'm sure all the school committee members how many parents come up to us what's going on in middle school sports what's going on I mean uh, more than anything else I mean class size you would think they'd say what's going on with class size what's going on with class size they're concerned with it but I get more questions about middle school sports I mean it's incredible but I'm glad that we, we were able to put it in in a modified version um, and I, I applaud my fellow members for um, supporting that as well as you know the mayor and the administration so uh, the school at the site level they're happy about it let's put it that way especially the guidance people who deal with some of the kids and what they're going through and what what they know works for certain kids so it was actually shared with me at um, North today when when it was announced that middle school sports were back the kids were cheering quite loudly yep. so the kids are thrilled as well mm -hmm. I saw some pictures of, like, I'm pretty sure it's the middle schools, that they have outdoor eating areas now. So I just wanted to be updated on which schools uh, that, that's, that cause that's correct. Uh, we actually had our cafe, I mean our patio put in um, over the summer. Uh, it's, it's really impressive. It's off of our cafeteria. I know that they, uh, Aldo can speak more to the long range plans with Chartwells, but uh, we actually got our umbrellas as well, the 10 foot sun umbrellas. And so it's really a, a great way to allow the students to go outside and to relax during lunch. Uh, there are also probably other uses for those areas in terms of school wide activities, but uh, they're, they're very, very, very nice and uh, have been very well done. I think the first album was at South that was done a couple of years ago and I believe the plans are where, where it's possible to do them in all the schools. You know? No. So which schools presently have I don't, I'm not them, sure. do you know? that in the summer months I lived by the Hancock School there were families out there because you had a playground there also but there were families out there picnicking all summer long so they would bring the kids to the playground use the tables with the umbrellas it was very it was for community it was very nice okay would you like me to do alternatives or okay is that okay Thank you. Go right, go right You're all set. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very funny. <laughs> uh, Dr. Tarasi visited the alternative sites today, um, and just to have some general numbers, um, the Keith Center had a successful opening with students in attendance from the Champion, Pathways, and Russell program. There were approximately 100 students in attendance um, engaged in academic classes and team building activities. Um, there were some staff reductions obviously at the key center um, so they're implementing a new master schedule there intended to maximize the use of staff. Um, there's still some adjustments that need to be made and so student schedules were still being worked on but all in all a, a good first day there. Um, I had the opportunity to visit the Goddard School today and, and when I arrived um, Jay Lander, the principal, 
was actually working on prepping a science lesson. Um, he did uh, recommend a science teacher. He had a science teacher who actually left to go to another district. Um, he was able to recommend a new science teacher, but um, with fingerprinting and Corey, um, the process um, taking taking some time, he was expecting the teacher to arrive uh, sometime next week. So when I arrived, he was doing a great job planning the science lesson, but I was actually able to connect him with the coordinator of math and science, who was 6 to 8, who is now 6 to 12, with the purpose of really supporting uh, the alternative sites. And she was able to actually go over there this afternoon and um, provide some lessons and some activities prior to the, the person coming on and then have a conversation with Principal Lander about supporting the person once they are on. Um, and obviously we had a lot of talk at this table and in subcommittee meetings about changing some of those positions and I, I just, uh, you know, I felt the positive impact as, as early as today. So I, I think that's going to be um, a, a real powerful shift. And he was, um, again, going to do a great job on his own, but it was really just nice that he could um, rely on that curriculum support support from someone else. As we keep talking about vertical articulation, it's very important for us from the, again, elementary to middle to high school, including our, our alternative sites, to make sure there is support there for Common Core, for lesson planning, uh, conversations. So this is something that we will continue to watch this year, but we're pleased with, with the model that has been put in place at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Principal Walter? Good evening. I'm going to say what you hear all the time with a little bit of a twist. It was better than the best opening ever. <laughs> better than the best. Uh, and I say that because we put a lot of work into planning for our freshmen this year. Uh, it was a goal that we had and finally we got some things accomplished and so we had our mentors trained. They were there at the orientation. We were fortunate to have the SHOOP organization, the Cape Verdean Association and our parent advocates at our orientation to meet the families and to provide additional support for them. Uh, our mentors, we have 75 students who volunteered to come in during the summer and be trained and so they showed up in force and people said why orange? We didn't want them to wear shirts that matched any of the houses and we wanted them to stand out which is why I'm in bright yellow today because I needed to stand out uh, and so they wore those shirts and wore them uh, and they were the best thing that we could have done because it is really pushing student leadership and, and they wanted the opportunities and so they, they took it on and they took it seriously and today they were around helping uh, and we had fewer students lost. We had them getting to classes faster um, and I have to say that the building looked much better than it has looked in years. Um, our custodial staff now has done a phenomenal job cleaning up Brockton High School. Um, they are responsive to us so anytime we called them and said we need more chairs or we need something taken care of, they were right they're helping out so that was part of that support as well. Um, our faculty yesterday we ended on a very positive note. They came in ready today. We knew we had challenges. We have directed academics with over 200 kids in it. That's the result of losing some some of our classes in, in a program and so we had to work really hard together to figure out how best to support students and everybody stepped up and did what they needed to do. Uh, with our freshmen we also have a video series for them. So in, while we had them in homeroom an extended amount of time, we had videos that we could show them about who's who at Brockton High. We have a navigation video, how to get around. Um, at the end of the day, they were out the door a little early. I said, I'm dismissing early so you can get to your buses. And so a young lady who walks didn't move. And then she finally asked her teacher, I'm a walker. What do I do? So I have to be a little clear that dismissal is for everybody. Uh, 
and she said, I think you should start walking home now. Uh, so we, we allowed them to leave a little early so that they could find their buses, which is always chaos for a number of kids trying to figure out, now how do I get back home? Uh, and so that ended up smoothing out, and by the time the buses left, most of them made it onto the bus on time. We have late buses, so those who needed it, they stuck around and they were able to get on the late buses. And when we walked the building at 4.30, it was cleared out. We had no complaints. No one returned to us. Uh, so it really was better than the best. And Fox 25 News was there at 6 o'clock. I got there at 10 after. They were already there. Yeah. Good. I also want to compliment your students. I wore this today. So we had students from the Empower Yourself uh, Financial Literacy Program Club. I'm not sure what it's called, but the students, uh, this was Mary and Angela, and the group yesterday actually set up a table outside when the teachers came in. They sold these lanyards for $10 as part of their fundraising and entrepreneurship, and I think it's just beautiful. So I want to thank them, and if people would like to purchase them, I think they can find them at the high school. Yes. I'm not sure if they're in DECA or... They, no, they uh, meet Tuesdays after school with Mr. Turner. Okay, so if anybody would like one, just, uh, just let me know. So thank you very much. The other thing I want to bring up with... Uh, Principal Wolder here is I do want to make you aware that we did increase the budget for substitutes this year. Um, there is concern. Um, we're watching it very closely. Our elementary schools, obviously, we have no choice. There needs to be substitutes in every class when a teacher is out. Make that attempt. We're watching the middle and the high school. Uh, we've put some permanent substitutes at the high school, but we have to be very careful to make sure the content level subjects are covered and continue to do the best we can can to, to cover all classes, but it is a budget we watch very, very closely and have a lot of discussion about. So, okay, thank good. Thank you. The other thing I have to say, because I'm not sure much credit is ever given, you've got Dr. Kathleen Moran sitting in the audience here, and her staff of Tracy Holland, Matt Beals, and Elisa Martineau, and this goes back to May when we went into the reduction in force, <coughs> and we were very careful. It was not a blanket two or three hundred. It was, it was calculated. I can't tell you it felt good. It didn't feel good for any one of us. But they went through all this. They tried to be as accurate as they could be. Um, as the summer came about, um, we sat down certainly with the Brockton Education Association, but we had to move forward and we placed over 90 teachers that were involuntary transfers. Um, unfortunately, we lost, and you know, Dr. Moran would come to my office and look at me because we lost some excellent staff that other school districts know Brockton teachers, they know the training that they have, and they were more than happy to take these staff members, and I can't blame them. I'm not sure if they felt that there was a little bit more stability, uh, but I will tell you Dr. Moran's office didn't miss a beat, and today when she and I sat down, although there are classes to be filled for the most part, we've either had things in progress, this fingerprinting. So this is another layer, and anybody new now has to be fingerprinted along with the quarry, and of course they're backed up a couple of weeks. So we're doing everything we can by calling other districts that they might have even subbed in, and you can actually get a certification from the other district that the person is fingerprinted and is able to come on board. But uh, they did an excellent job in the Human Resource Office, and I want to thank her. So that is, uh, I'd like to ask our Deputy Superintendent Thomas to come up. He'll talk to us about all things transportation and lunches and facilities and uh, operations. Good evening. Um, we, starting with lunches, we served uh, 10,743 lunches today for the first day, which is uh, pretty good for the first day of school. Uh, transportation with 50 buses and 50 vans, um, we transported just over 9,000 students across the district. Those are the numbers this year. Um, there were some delays, some longer than others uh, with some of the buses. Uh, first student does have um, 
there are probably about 20% new drivers that are getting used to getting around the city. Um, and just from the first day, there's always uh, issues at bus stops that they have to stop a lot longer and wait. They're, at, they're actually told by, by us to please wait at bus stops a little bit longer just in, just in case parents and, and kids are running late to the stop. So things get backed up. Some buses were late 20 minutes, some a half hour. So obviously that's not very convenient for parents that, that are working, but um, it's just the reality of um, getting, getting around the city the first time, getting students used to the, the stops and getting used to their new routes. So uh, we have 50 buses, 50 vans. Um, the good news for a student did upgrade um, their buses and vans. They have 70% of the buses and vans which um, switched over to 2010s or newer. Um, and 50% of their buses uh, have been switched over to 2010s or newer. So, um, and that's, that's a really good sign because their buses were getting up in age um, with over 200, 300,000 miles on them. So they just made a big changeover um, to their bus fleet and bus and van fleet. Uh, good news on the crossing guards because of the deal, the MOU that was um, struck last year um, with the um, custodians union who are now represented by the Teamsters. We're able to keep the 100 crossing guard posts that we had last year uh, and they stayed put this year. So um, that's excellent news for the students who are walking to school. Um, and again, I can take any questions. The facilities, again, as, as uh, Ms. Wolder said, the high school um, looks great. It's best it's looked in years. Um, the teachers and students returning to the Davis, the, um, the modulars, there was nothing but praise about the modulars for the work that was done there by the craftsmen. They did an excellent job. Uh, the, the two new pods that were built out at the Raymond were a big hit. Um, so those things went well. And again, the, the buildings are clean. Again, some of the older ones, you know, you don't get the chance to do the upgrades to a lot of the carpets and the cabinetry and different things like that. But as far as cleanliness, the buildings look good and they were um, safe and clean. So, and the lighting, some of the lighting was upgraded. So, upgraded. So, they, they, the buildings look good, and for the first day, I think it went pretty well. Uh, you know, when we talk about all these things and large numbers and concern, I do want to say to the parents, uh, and I want to thank the mayor uh, for supporting us with transportation because we're not paying fees for any of these things. Our children are getting to school. You know, for the most part, everybody has the opportunity to be on a bus within our guidelines. We're not charging any fees. When you talk about sports or the programs that we offer at high school, bringing back the middle school sports and clubs, we really do try to find a balance. Again, nobody is paying a fee. So you're running a very large school district on a very tight budget. You're continuing to find ways, grants and development. I've met with them recently. I mean, we are doing everything we can to bring attention to what we feel is concern for some of the needs of our students, but we're not sitting back, we're not taking it lightly, and yet I think our uh, parents and our children are blessed in that every child is able to have access, as I said, transportation, clubs, activities, music, the arts. None of those things are gone and we're just hanging on by a thread, but we're hanging on. So I want to thank everybody you know, for all of the efforts to, to open up schools and give our kids certainly the opportunities they have. Uh, tell us where we're at with the, um, uh, the schools that have uh, the pods. Yes. Um, and and we the have, walls, because I know that that was yep. a, a uh, we concern. Have, exactly. We have five out of the seven that are built out at the Davis. Uh, there are now four out of the seven built, built out at the uh, Raymond. Um, so the goal is to finish um, those two schools. Uh, we're going to do another uh, uh, one more build out uh, over the um, the Christmas break. So we're going to do one more pod at the Raymond over Christmas break, and then we're going to. Our goal is to f for next summer to plan budget wise to build out, uh, finish the the Davis and the Raymond. Fil fin that would be two pods in each school left, and then my goal would be to go and do it at the Downey School. I was at the Downey. They the, have pods. The they have pods as well. Oh, I well. didn't realize that. Yeah. Really. And actually, those schools oh, would be a lot. The Downey would be a lot easier to build out than uh, the Davis and Raymond, because uh, you can go all the way to the top um, with the Downey, because those rooms have separate. Um, ventilation systems that vent right out the walls so you, it's much easier to build out the Downey than the Davis and Raymond. It doesn't seem as 
loud at the day at the Downey because a lot of people don't realize it's a pod school because it's it's set up a little bit differently. Um, the pods are a little bit bigger. Uh, they're not chopped up as much, but um, I think that would really improve the Downey School as well. With putting putting walls in there, and that would be my hope to do that next summer. Great. I think. I mean, I think that would be beneficial. Yeah. I mean, when I walk through some of the classrooms that didn't have walls. I mean, you say to yourself, how the heck, how, who thought that this was a good idea? Who, you know, with four classrooms going on, I mean, I, I know if I was a student, I'd be looking around everywhere, and besides what I'm supposed to be looking at on my desk, I mean, it's ama It's really a disadvantage, you know, but that's great. It's great to hear that you, you know, have it all scheduled out, but... Um, uh, I, I bet you the teachers are, that have the walls are, are happier this year than they were last year without. So yeah, they're thrilled. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And the only other thing I'd like to mention, uh, I know the mayor who got to sit in the front row, we attended uh, yesterday the uh, inauguration of Dr. Fred Clark. Uh, what was so special about this is, again, a uh, native of Brockton, educated in the Brockton Public Schools. I think he went to the Huntington. Uh, June uh, Saber McGuire joined me yesterday in representing the Brockton Public Schools. I know Laurie Silva was there and Karen Watts. Thank you. I thought we had a good contingent. Yeah. But a wonderful ceremony. The governor was there uh, to install uh, Fred Clark. And I know you're having a, an event tomorrow afternoon. Yes, so anyone, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon in Brockton City Hall, we're having a reception for the, the new president of Bridgewater State University, Fred Clark. Um, I just echo some of what the superintendent said. <coughs> I mean, Bridgewater State's been a great, great partner to the city and to the Brockton Public Schools for years. I think they, you know, there's so many programs with the Bridge Partnership and, and uh, uh, the, the work they do at the Huntington School and, and uh, they just really provide a lot of support to families and mentors for change. Uh, so I actually believe that under President Clark I think the commitment's going to continue to expand. He, uh, uh, I've got a great relationship with him. He never fails to mention to people his uh, childhood days growing up in Brockton at the Huntington School. Uh, he's extremely proud of his Brockton roots and uh, I, I believe that uh, the relationship and the support we get from Bridgewater State will just continue to grow. And it's great being over on that campus because uh, there are a lot of Brockton students at Bridgewater State and just being over there with the freshman class was part of it yesterday. And I must have had a, a dozen of the incoming freshmen come and grab me to say hello and let me know that they were there uh, for their first day as the uh, class of 2019 at Bridgewater State. So um, I think it was a great day for Bridgewater State University, but it was a great day for Brockton also. One of the things that we're doing, uh, Dr. Murray sits on a, a task force and it's called Connect Gateway to College. And this year, all of our seventh graders will have an opportunity to go to Bridgewater State University. Parents will be uh, spoken to as far as financial aid, which you think it's, it's really, they're kind of young, but it gives parents the idea that everybody can afford college. There's ways, if your child has the opportunity to go, you can afford it. So there'll be all kinds of services provided, not just to Brockton, but I think to students in a number of the gateway communities. Or That's great. It's uh, certainly paying attention to the college and career readiness. And I have to say, my, my view is a little bit uh, influenced by the fact that my daughter is entering her junior year at Bridgewater right. State this year. So I'm uh, really, really pleased to have her as a student there. Very good. That's my report. All right. That's it? Um, my report. I'm, I'm just kidding. That's it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Okay, so I think that's the opening of schools report. Uh, items to refer to subcommittee. Anyone have an item that they'd like to refer to subcommittee? We do have a number of things. Uh, curriculum subcommittee, we would like to do our update on the talented and gifted program. 
I know there were a uh, task force that looked at uh, making some changes there, so we'd like to schedule a curriculum subcommittee. Um, also, I know we do have some other policies that need updating probably in the next couple of months that we'd like to be able to sit down and go over those policies. Some of these we could do during the retreat. So I'll leave that open. If we can come up with a date for the retreat, uh, late September, early October, uh, we can do the superintendent's new goals. We could do a number of the things that we were talking about this evening, a report on talented and gifted. If we could do a half a day, I think that's worked for us. So I'll leave that to the vice chair. Wanda, and we'll get dates out to the rest of the committee and see what works for everybody. And Okay, right. and you've got the superintendent contract, correct? Yeah, the evaluation. Please. Yep, I'm just waiting for everyone to submit um, these submissions, and I'm hopefully it'll be all done by the, mm -hmm. hopefully by the end of the weekend coming up. If people could try to get it in by, you know, Sunday, that'd be great, and we can get on it next week. That's it. All right, now just if I could just make a, a comment on my experience today of running around to a few of the schools and. My perspective was a little bit different. I was really focused on pedestrian safety and making sure the students were all getting into and, in, into and out of school safely. Um, you know, in the past year we put a big emphasis on pedestrian safety here in the city. And we talk all the times about the three E's, engineering, education, and enforcement. In the schools last year we made a huge commitment to the Safe Routes to Schools program, which is now in all of our middle schools and elementary schools. Um, but the 30 enforcement, Lieutenant Mills is here, he had the school police out in full force this morning. Chief Crowley has put a number of additional police officers on uh, for at least the first week or two of the school year. So everyone is to be warned that there is uh, stepped up traffic enforcement, uh, particularly during school hours right now. We're, we want to send a message to everybody that the kids are back in school. and. Uh, we really need everyone to engage in really safe driving habits. When Mr. Thomas mentions 9,000 students being transported in buses, that means there's over 8,000 that are walking. And that's a lot of, a lot of kids out on the streets uh, twice a day. So uh, we just want to remind all the drivers to, to slow down and really be uh, conscious of the fact that we have over 8,000 kids twice a day walking to school. Um, and I've got to put a plug in for the crossing guard. So I was at four schools today uh, outside watching and uh, I went to the Huntington, the Davis, the Angelo, and the Arnone today. And the school crossing guards really have a tough job. And I was really impressed with the ones that I interacted with today. And some of them have been doing it for a while this afternoon. Uh, Todd is out in front of the Arnone incredibly busy handling two streets at the same time with people going both ways and uh, just did a great job and the people outside the Huntington particularly this morning unbelievable I mean some of our schools have more walkers than others do um, and some are in much busier streets uh, main roads so um, I just want to acknowledge the fact that uh, those men and women are doing a great job trying to make sure the kids get in and out of school safely and uh, I guess we're on new business. Anyone have anything else I'd like to bring up in a new business? Mr. Henningsen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to publicly thank the um, public <laughs> for um, generously donating to my uh, second year of doing a school supply drive. Um, it was a little bit smaller this year, but uh, the Huntington, the Davis, and the George School all be getting boxes of school supplies, um, courtesy of all the residents in the city. Uh, they really came through, and it was quite impressive on, on the donations, even small donations of a couple dollars here and there, translated into boxes and boxes of crayons, pencils, pens, etc. Um, so it's, it's another successful um, school drive, and I hope to do another one next year and do another three or four schools. So um, I just wanted to thank the public for all of their support, and uh, thank you so much for helping out. Thank you very for coordinating that. I know that uh, we have a lot of kids that uh, appreciate the, uh, the extra support. New business. Anyone else? Mr. Minicelli, you sure? At your age, you forgot what you were going to say? Or? <laughs> All right, well, if there's no other new business, uh, I'll entertain a motion. 
Motion made. Second. All in favor? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.